What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video for my Omi homies. In today's video, I'll be giving you my reaction to recent VV news. We'll be talking about the overall crypto market and at the end of the video, I'll be giving you my updated price prediction for 2021. So stick around, there's a lot to talk about. Now let's get into it. What's going on everybody? I hope you're having a great week. There is a lot to talk about. It seems like there's always so much to talk about with Omi. They have so many things going on and they're juggling so many balls at one time. This weekend there was an excellent interview, Women X Vivi. Uh, I want to talk about some of the things that came up in that interview with Dan Crothers and talk about you know the new kind of timeline that we expect things to roll out on, how that affects my price prediction for the year 2021. Just a reminder to smash the like button if you like the content. It really helps this young channel grow. It helps get the video out to more people. So I'm almost at 900 subscribers. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And follow me on Twitter. The channel's Twitter handle is linked down below in the description. Now before we begin, of course, we're gonna start by talking about the recent price action. Over the last 24 hours, the OMI token is down about 3% at that 0 .0052 level. We've been trading in this range for quite some time. And I do think that consolidation is a good thing. As I said in my last video, the 0 .005 range seems to be the new 0 .003. And barring something crazy, I really don't expect to ever see the coin down at those levels again. So congratulations if you bought during that lengthy period of consolidation. OMI is holding up pretty well relative to the overall market, which has been red. It's been a rocky September, which is typical for crypto. Bitcoin is historically down in September. September is its worst performing month. And this was kind of expected. If you look at the fear and greed index, you can see that sentiment in the crypto market is verging towards extreme fear. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of love it when there is fear in the market because that means there is opportunity in the market and I will definitely be dollar cost averaging in this week when I get paid in a couple of days. Hopefully the market stays down. I'll be buying some more OMI and I'll be buying a few other coins because just as I believe we'll never see OMI in this 0 0.003 range again, I think it's only a matter of time before the days of buying this coin in this 0 0.005 range are long behind us. So I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity to continue to buy it at these levels. And the reason why it won't remain at these levels is because of all of the exciting things happening. Least of all the Marvel Digital Comics, which continue to kill it and sell out in record time. This morning, Uncanny X-Men number four with five variant colors in blind box format sold out in a matter of seconds. This particular comic is another first. It's the first appearance of Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, and her brother Quicksilver. So we've just been witnessing a series of firsts, the first Spider-Man NFT, the first Marvel comic NFT, the first Black Widow appearance. It's one first after another and the comics are doing extremely well. Take a look at Donnie with a floor price of $100,000. That is just insane. A lot of the VV NFTs are starting to run. You got Pride by Vinci up to almost a $7,000 floor. And then of course, Marvel number one, secret rare, up to a floor price of $50,000. What's great is as these sell for more and more money in the secondary market, we're going to be burning more and more OMIs. So this is very bullish. What's also bullish is the awareness that these sales will bring to Vivi and the eyes that are going to now be on Vivi as people start to take notice that, you know, these NFTs are going for six figures now. I don't think that it will be too long before the first Marvel comic 
gets into that six figure range and what's that going to do people are going to hear about it and it's going to attract more people into the app and the beautiful thing about the comics is that they're done in blind box format that means anybody has a chance it's kind of like how sports cards work and it's you know it's the beauty of opening you know packs of sports cards or buying a box of sports cards I don't know if many of you are familiar with how, how these things work, but there are chase cards, you know, embedded in the product. So you have a, you know, a, a, a chance at getting, you know, an autographed LeBron or an autographed Mike Trout. And part of the thrill of opening up your cards is hitting that, you know, that chase card. So I think that the blind box format really works out well and will attract people to the product. Now, a lot of people have been asking for transparent data on all the transactions and sales that are taking place in the secondary market. They want to be able to see it in the VV app. And Dan did speak to that during the Women X VV um, video, saying that this was on the way, but they just have so much going on that you know it will happen in just a matter of time they don't need immutable to run that data they can do it now and they actually have all that data uh, it's just a matter of getting it out there to people but I think that that will also be a good thing for collectors also a good thing for collectors is New York Comic Con coming up in just about two weeks October 7th through October 10th now to be clear the team is not going to be appearing at New York Comic Con but they will have special drops during that window that are specifically timed to take place during New York Comic Con and capitalize on you know, the attention on the collectible space. One of the things that I'm excited about that they mentioned during their last AMA was incorporating autographs into the products. So imagine you know, an autographed Marvel comic number one. Imagine what that would go for. It's gonna add another layer of scarcity, another layer of rarity, and create another Chase collectible. Now this weekend, Dan talked about the Masters Collectors Program, and what he said just gave me more conviction in the team and conviction in the project. That's because, you know, he said that the staking program will be separate from the Master Collectors Program, so people won't be able to stake their OMI to earn rewards and move up in the rankings. Now there was a fear around that and it really would have created an uneven playing field. So to see the team putting collectors first is a great thing. And it's really the main reason why they're going to be successful. Because when you put your product first and when you put the people first, good things are going to happen. So. This is great for collectors. They're introducing a ranking system where you can move up and down the rankings. And it's not only based on the number of collectibles you own, but it'll also be based on your level of engagement within the app. So that just incentivizes people to engage with one another. It creates that social dynamic within the platform and it helps to level the playing field. So people can't just you know manipulate their way to the top. Uh, in the video, Dan also talked about the VV-verse, saying that everyone will have their own house. Your showroom will be like your house in the VV-verse, and that the collectors, true collectors, would have a chance to purchase land first. They're going to unleash the land in two different you know, parts. First, real collectors will get a chance to purchase, and then purchases will be opened up to everyone else. Now, there's really no perfect way to roll out a land sale where, you know, that'll please everyone. But I think this is the best route to go because you need to reward your true collectors. Now, the VVverse is coming next year, 2022, maybe first quarter, should be here by the second quarter, and it's going to be probably the major catalyst of next year. It's going to trigger an insane amount of token burning. This weekend, the team will be releasing new details on new token burning mechanisms and other details about things coming down the pike. So that'll be something to watch out for. But what about 
my price prediction for the end of the year. You know, I'm always going back and forth and running new information uh, through my mind to try to determine where I think this thing is going. Now, I do think unless there's a major run in the market, we're going to trade sideways and be range bound in this 0.005 range until the next catalyst comes, which should be immutable. The migration should be coming about soon. And when it does, we're likely to see the coin run and test the next level of resistance, which I think will be around the 0.007 mark. Now, I've always said that in the most bullish scenario, Omi could hit five cents by the end of the year, five cents by the end of 2021. And that's nearly a 10x from our current levels. Now, I don't think that we're going to hit that five cents this year. And that's for two reasons. First reason is we only have 12 weeks left. All right, we're a little more than three months out now from the end of the year. Before you know it, we're gonna be midway through October, all right? And we're still trading in this 0 0.005 range. With every run that we go on, we're gonna meet resistance. There are gonna be people selling off. So when we get to that 0 0.007 range, there are gonna be people putting in big sell orders. Then when we hit that one penny mark, there are gonna be a lot of people looking to cash out part of their positions. A lot of whales who are looking you know, to cash in. So I don't think that time is on our side for a five cent OMI token by the end of the year. However, I do think that five cents can happen first quarter next year, 2022. We'll see how it plays out. And my original prediction, what I always thought would happen is one to three cents by the end of the year. I still think that that's in play. I think that we will see a new all-time high this year. And I do think that OMI is very undervalued at this current price. And once we get to Immutable and start running on the Ethereum network, we will get listed on more exchanges. Hopefully a big exchange, Coinbase would be great for awareness, as would interoperability in getting some of these NFTs listed on platforms like OpenSea. But again, they did say that that would take a significant amount of time. All right, so really time is necessary to let this project flourish. We need to be patient, good things are happening, good things will continue to happen, and I hope that I have more time to continue to dollar cost average into OMI and add to my position. So that's my prediction for the end of the year, but what do I know? I'm just a guy in a Baywatch t-shirt. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Once again, if you like the content, please smash the like button on your way out and subscribe to the channel, and as always, be happy, be healthy, and be safe. I will see you in the next video.